you can tell me about Memphis. From the boardroom to the streets. Nah, I don't already know. Look, Mike from Memphis, man. Together, we can fix things. Uh, really? When you say, I want to be treated fairly, and I want, uh, and I want a voice. A voice. Yeah. I want he a saw voice. things one fair. So he chose to run for mayor. You get up and do something when you really care. It's Memphis 360. I'm with you. I'm with you. In the meantime, it's Memphis 360. In the meantime, in between time, uh, we got folks shooting people up out the frame. And if I said a word, we've become man. accustomed to people dying uh, in this city. Yeah, it's Memphis 360. Turning the TV on and the news and see our loved ones and see young people that are out of control. And now you see, okay, okay. But we talk about incarceration, we talk about the youth, we talk about giving them the ability, we talk about investing in young people and investing in the community. See, I hate ignorance. I hate when people make decisions about things and they make statements and they haven't done their research and they haven't done their research how can you fix the problem when you don't even know what the problem is we need some help in this city we need some help in this city it's Memphis 360 see I hate you I hate you it's Memphis 360 it's Memphis 360 man it's Memphis 360 Actually imagine hosting your next event at the all-new SVP Banquet and Event Center? Yes, spacious, beautiful venue with plenty of parking located in the heart of East Memphis. Let us host your next intimate birthday gathering, family repast, bachelorette party, wedding and reception, baby shower, corporate meeting, social club event. Call us today. Don't wait. 901-244-6874. The all-new SVP Banquet and Event Center. Tune in to Talking Law with Attorney Daryl O'Neill and the special guest host, Attorney Jerome Payne. Live TV talk on your digital device, on Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV. Download the SVP TV app right now. Check us out every Tuesday on Comcast Cable, Channel 17, 8.30 p.m. And we are live every Friday on Facebook Live, 6 o'clock in the evening. You've got a question, our attorneys have the answer. So let's talk law with Attorney Daryl O'Neill on the SVP TV Network. And good evening. We'd like to welcome you to another edition of Memphis 360, the television show. We say we like to go from the boardroom to the streets. How can you fix the ills and woes, what's going on in the city, if you don't know what's going on in the city? There are so many politicians and individuals that are disconnected in this city. And we're hoping, guess what? We just had city elections. Yay! I want to say congratulations to Mayor-elect Paul Young. Mr. Young is the individual that you chose to be the next mayor of Memphis, the next leader of this city and we are so hoping that Mr. Young has the ability to connect, cross over, fight crime, put people in place, do all of those good things that's going to turn this city around. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, I know for a fact Mr. Young is very smart, he's innovative, he's creative, he was over Memphis Housing Authority, then they put him over Bill Street Merchants Association, then they put him over the downtown commission and now he is going to be the next mayor of the city of Memphis which takes effect January the 1st 2024 I'm already starting to see that he and Mayor Strickland are talking a lot uh, they're putting plans together I guess Mayor Strickland is trying to sell him on all the ideas that he had and uh, so that he could continue some of the initiatives that Mr. Strickland put in place I am hoping that Mr. Young come up with some good ideas. I am hoping that Mr. Young 
sits down with the right individuals and learn how to or come up with a definitive plan on how to approach the number one issue, the number one concern of the citizens of this city, which is crime. All right. Hey, we got a really good show for you tonight. Uh, I told you guys that, yeah, we had the city elections going on, but there was another election going on in the background. And I felt that it was just as important as the elections that were going on in the city. Why? Because we're talking about crime again. And we're talking about the individuals that are going to lead the Memphis Police Association into the next era as well. Uh, I retired from the Memphis Police Department and the Memphis Police Association in September of 2020. Ms. Essica Lillijohn became the president who was the vice president at that time, and she has been at the helm of the Memphis Police Department, Memphis Police Association since then. Well, guess what? Her era is up. Uh, Ms. Lillijohn was promoted to major, congratulations. And not only that, uh, her term is up. So the Memphis Police Association is about to start their elections. Individuals have been pulling petitions. The election has been heating up. Wow, it's, man, yeah, you might not see it as external to the police association, but all of the police officers and all of the retirees, we are closely watching to see who's going to be the next president of the Memphis Police Association. Who's gonna be the next vice president? Who's gonna be the next secretary treasurer? Who's going to be the next chief steward? Who's going to be the next sergeant at arms? And I'm gonna tell you, for us, just from my perspective, it is very, very, very important and very critical in who you put in office as the individuals that are going to lead the Memphis Police Association because once again, we're talking about crime. We're talking about the individuals that you want to go out into the city and to fight crime. Uh, the charter of the Memphis Police Association says that the Memphis, uh, Memphis Police Association says that the president, vice president, his staff, uh, the executive board, that they will support the director of the Memphis Police Department in the accomplishment of its mission. It also says that the Memphis Police Association will work within the community to build uh, relationships, friendships, all of that kind of stuff, uh, goodwill, what have you. I'm just paraphrasing. I'm not saying what it says exactly. So it's going to be very important that the individuals that do lead the Memphis Police Association kind of adhere to that. And I think that over the course of the last however many years, I think that the Memphis Police Association has built relationships in the community. I think the Memphis Police Association has done a lot of good thing for the officers. I'm hearing that the Memphis Police officers are the highest paid right now in the community, uh, in this region, which at one time they were like second or third with all of the issues and all of the crime that they're faced with. That was because of the leadership of the Memphis Police Association. Uh, they had lost their benefits as far as new officers being in the pension plan. All of that has been restored and they have the ability to now be in the pension plan as opposed to the hybrid. Uh, a lot of the police officers, when you talk about promotions, there was a time when I was on, we went nine years without a sergeant's promotion. That is no longer happening. So it's because of the leadership that was at the Memphis Police Association. They said that the retirees would never get their benefits back. Wrong. The retirees now have the ability to acquire insure, insurance once they leave the Memphis Police Department with the city of Memphis, if in fact that's what they want to do. So there are a lot of things at stake. There's still, still a lot of things that need to be done. So we have to have innovative, creative individuals that have the ability to work with the police officers, work with the mayor of the city, work with the Memphis City Council, and work with the community. So I am hoping that the individuals that take these positions and these responsibilities 
have the ability to do that. And we have two individuals in the studio tonight that say we are the ones you need to elect us because we are proven leadership. I read that somewhere today. I think that was on uh, Matt's poster. Proven leadership. You need to go with proven leadership. So we're going to give them the opportunity to come up here. And I said I was going to try to get them on here, and I'm so thankful that they took the opportunity to come and to allow you the ability to hear them, what their platform is, and how they um, see the Memphis Police Association in the future and how they are going to go forward. All right? So we're going to take a real quick commercial break, and we're going to get Matt Cunningham up here, who is vying for president of the Memphis Police Association. Y'all, he, he want my old job. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't got nowhere to go. No, I'm just kidding. But he wants to be president. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes I wonder, you sure you want that? That's a lot of responsibility. A lot of people just don't know. And for someone to want to give themselves um, so that they could hold that position, that's a lot, man. You can't go in there playing. And Matt has been the vice president under President Essica Littlejohn, and he was also the treasurer for the police association prior to that. So he's put some work in. So we're going to take a real quick commercial break. Don't touch that dial, and we'll be right back with Matt Cunningham. Can you actually imagine hosting your next event at the all-new SVP Banquet and Event Center? Yes, spacious, beautiful venue with plenty of parking located in the heart of East Memphis. Let us host your next intimate birthday gathering, family repast, bachelorette party, wedding and reception, baby shower, corporate meeting, social club event. Call us today. Don't wait. 901-244-6874. The all-new SVP Banquet and Event Center. Tune in to Talking Law with Attorney Daryl O'Neill and the special guest host, Attorney Jerome Payne. Live TV talk on your digital device, on Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV. Download the SVP TV app right now. Check us out every Tuesday on Comcast Cable, Channel 17, 8.30 p.m. And we are live every Friday on Facebook Live, 6 o'clock in the evening. You've got a question, our attorneys have the answer. So let's talk law with Attorney Daryl O'Neill on the SVP TV Network. You're talking about a good time she Center Stage Gospel Music live from Memphis, Tennessee. Featuring gospel artists from around the world. Toe tapping, hand clapping, down home gospel music. Watch on Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, and your local Comcast. Download the SVP TV app now on your smart television and mobile device. Center Stage Gospel season premieres Sunday, 8 p.m. Central. Hey folks, it's Issa Haddad here. I got some good news and a special invitation for you to come see me here at Sunrise Carterville. Come on down, check out my inventory with new, pre-owned, and certified vehicles to choose from. I can get you financed when no one else can. Come on by, bring your family. I treat you like family. Come see me, Issa, here at the number one dealership in the Mid-South, 4605 Houston Levy Road, Sunrise, Carterville. Come on down, check out my inventory with hundreds of vehicles to choose from, pre-owned, new, and certified. Good news from Sunrise Chevrolet. Get in your new vehicle today. Come on in, ask for Issa. Bankrupt, slow pay, bad credit, it's okay. Let Issa put you in your brand new truck or car today. When you shop at Sunrise Chevrolet, Carterville. And don't forget, ask for me, Issa. For over 20 years, Opox has been keeping the Mid-South warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Opox is family owned and operated, so our family will take care of yours every step of the way. And right now you can double up and save. Buy a new AC unit and get 50% off a new furnace to match it. Count on Opox for fast and professional heating and cooling services. Count on Opox.
tune in to Talking Law with Attorney Daryl O'Neill and the special guest host, Attorney Jerome Payne. Live TV Talk on your digital device on Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV. Download the SVP TV app right now. Check us out every Tuesday on Comcast Cable, Channel 17, 8.30 p.m. And we are live every Friday on Facebook Live, 6 o'clock in the evening. You've got a question, our attorneys have the answer. So let's talk law with Attorney Daryl O'Neill on the SVP TV Network. And welcome back to Memphis 360, the television show we say we like to go from the boardroom to the streets. And in the studio today, my guest, my first guest, because I have two, so don't go nowhere. My first guest is Matt Cunningham, who is the current vice president of the Memphis Police Association, and he is running for president of the Memphis Police Association. Matthew, <laughs> welcome to the show. Hello, Mike. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you for coming. Hey, the number call is 901-244-6874, 901-244-6874, if you have any questions for Matthew Cunningham at this time, who is running for president of the Memphis Police Association. So first of all, Matt, tell uh, the audience out there a little bit about you, a little bit about your career on the police department and why do you why do you want to run for president well uh, I came on the police department in 1999 I worked in uniform patrol at four different precincts throughout my patrol career uh, I was promoted to sergeant in 2016 uh, spent two years as an investigator in the general investigations bureau um, and then in 2018 as you mentioned earlier I was uh, fortunate enough to become the secretary treasurer of the MPA um, I served in that capacity for two years until you decided to take the good life and retire. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, Essica Cage Rosario, she's going to kill you for calling her Little John. Oh, I, <laughs> you know what? Every time she came on the show, I would do that. I'm just, look, I knew her for 15, 16, 17 yeah. years as Essica Little John. Right. So I had to apologize every time. But go ahead. But yeah, so she moved up to the president's spot and. Uh, the executive board saw fit to move me up to the vice president spot, so I've been doing that for the, uh, the last three years. And uh, probably my the the biggest qualifier I would think is that my job as vice president is to fill in as the president when mm -hmm. Eska is unavailable to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've I've experienced the job firsthand, and I've I've had a great time doing it. Um, I started. I remember coming in and sitting down with you in 2015. Uh, you know, right at, the vote had taken place to take away our benefits in 14, but. It didn't take effect until 16. I said, Mike, you know, what do we do? What, mm -hmm. how, how do we combat this? Because mm -hmm. I wasn't very active in the union at that point. And you said, Matt, get involved. And so I started my first negotiation team, uh, worked up through negotiation team leader to, you know, secretary treasurer. And we were able to, fortunately, uh, you know, over the last eight years, we were able to come up with a, a strategy to, to get those benefits restored. Uh, right. We put it into place, made it happen with the, you know, with the help of the membership and the help of the fire union. and. Uh, now uh, we've gotten all those benefits that were taken away restored. So mm -hmm. that's probably the, the biggest accomplishment since the strike of 78 that mm. the, the MPA has accomplished. Right, so right, uh, right. yeah, uh, uh, that's, that's it in a nutshell. So. Okay, so now, why do you want to be the president? <laughs> so uh, I want to be the president because I, I don't want to see the enormous strides that we've made over the last five to eight years. I don't want to see them squandered. I don't want to see them lost again. Um, it, when I went in in 2015 to the, the first negotiation team, uh, it was my first experience negotiating with the city, doing contract negotiations on the, uh, the uh, MOU, our Memorandum of Understanding, um, with the city. And so I learned a lot. And, uh, you know, so I, 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 it was extremely hard. It's extremely difficult. And you know as well right. as I do in some years, it's impossible to make headway on some items. Okay. Uh, so we've made enormous strides in the last five years. And I don't want to see, you know, uh, someone come in who doesn't doesn't have that experience and doesn't know how the uh, the, the negotiations or how the interactions with the city work mm -hmm. uh, and watch those benefits, you know, lost again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my primary reason. Plus, uh, you know, I enjoy the job. I enjoy representing the membership. Okay. Um, you know, I, I I've, I've spent the first 17 years on the job serving the citizens of Memphis with everything I could, and now I, I've spent the last eight. 
uh, you know, watching out for the officers that serve the citizens of the city. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like that that's extremely important and the officers deserve, you know, someone to watch their back, make sure their rights are secured, make sure our contract with the city is uh, kept in, you know, intact and, and uh, to help promote better wages, benefits, working environments um, and retirements for our officers. And for those that don't know and don't have an uh, inkling, Matt Cunningham and I actually went through the academy together. We sure did. We actually went through the academy <laughs> together. Uh, we started August 16th, 1999. Uh, 1999. Yes. Um, and Jesus, that seems like a lifetime ago. You ready to feel really old? So our class was the 80th recruit class. The, the last one to graduate was 140. They've had 60 classes since we went through. 140? 140. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Woo. But I'm telling you, they didn't have the classes the sizes that we had. We had three classes. Yeah. Well, we had two. I know we had gold and blue. Yeah, we had gold Did we have gray? We, the gray was the lateral. Okay. The lateral class. Yeah. So we had a lateral class coming through. We had the gold class and the blue class. I think we had 100 and... Jesus, was like a hundred and uh, something. Yeah, we started out with about 110. Uh, I think we graduated 78. Yeah. How many actually ended up graduating? Man, that was a big class. Those yeah. were big classes. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, now we're graduating 30, 40. Yeah. So we yeah. need those 78. We need those big classes again. We yeah. need the manpower. We do. We do. So what? how do you see, okay, if you, you know, I keep, well, first of all, let me tell you, it's getting heated in the police association with the elections that are going on. And there are a lot of people that are wanting to step up to the plate to actually fill your seat, fill uh, John Covington's seat, the seat that he is currently running for, which is vice president, his old seat, which is chief steward, a lot of people. I am so glad to see a lot of interest uh, because I've always said that people need to get involved in the police association. Not at the last minute. I'm not a last minute kind of guy. But they do need to get involved and they need to stay involved in the police association because the police association is only as strong as its members. Membership. I hear people say, uh, uh, we, we need better pay. Right. You know, they saying we need better pay. What do you say to that? So <clears throat> this year we had, <clears throat> excuse me, we had an, an, an historic raise this year mm. uh, for police, a 14% raise this year, which is the highest in police history. Um, Wow, that's the highest in history? That's the highest police raise, the, the, the largest percentage raise in, that we can find, at least in, in MPD history. Okay. Uh, if there's one back in the 1800s, I might have missed it. But, uh, but no, I, I, you know, the largest one in the last 100 years for sure. Um, so uh, we have now become the, the highest paid uh, law enforcement agency in the region, which will help us recruit and get those large class numbers that we need. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so th when I started in 2015, a topped out patrolman's salary was around $53,500 a year, and today it's $20,000 a year or more. Oh, 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 hold right. up. You're telling me a patrolman topped out salary now is around $73,000? $73,000. Man, that's what sergeants was making. Yeah. That's what, so, so what are sergeants making, like 80? Sergeants making right at $80,000 a year, yeah. My wife yeah. didn't tell me that. <laughs> Sorry, Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> Look, y'all, my wife did not tell me that. She didn't tell me she was making all that money. Woo, and I hope she makes lieutenant. What are lieutenants making? Oh, and lieutenants are about five or 6,000 more. Yeah, so 85, 86,000 a year. Yeah. God, yeah. man, Jesus Christ. Uh, okay. <laughs> God, just stopped me for yeah, a minute. Yeah, I started saying, I didn't mean to I, I didn't know my wife was making that much but money. Those Jesus. are the monumental uh, steps we've made, you know, the monumental increases that we've had uh, to, for pay that, you know, we're hoping that, you know, the, the workload in Memphis is so heavy compared to agencies around us that, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to have an incentive to have officers come here. Right. And, and we feel like that that pays a good first step. Right, right, right. Okay, well, out freaking standing. Look at that, man. Look at all the things that they have done down there at the Police Association. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm not trying to be controversial. It's okay. But for individuals that are running and they say, we won't change, are, do you have an inkling of what change they want? So some of the rumblings I've heard uh, about the change are, you know, we want the, the department held more accountable. Um, I, I think those comments come from a place of not knowing the rules are in place and okay. just what the MPA can and can't do as right. far as, um, you know, making the department or the city government do anything mm -hmm. for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I've mentioned, we've got our memorandum of understanding and in that memorandum of understanding, 
is a procedure, a grievance procedure, mm -hmm. that we have to follow before we enter the court system. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are like, why didn't you, uh, mm -hmm. why didn't you, uh, you know, file a lawsuit or an injunction? And uh, the bottom line is, is that we have to go through this agreed upon grievance procedure uh, before we before we enter the court system. Right. So we would love to see that streamlined because it's extremely slow, and I understand the frustration with that. But um, but we we have to abide by the agreement that we signed. We right. agreed to. Right, right. Um, so that's one of the rumblings, and you know, and an, another one I hear is, uh, you know, they want term limits, and uh, you know, they want uh, term limits for what? For I guess the executive board members. Oh, um, really? You know, I, I, we have elections oh, every wow. four years, so wow. you know. I, I don't <coughs> so know they want y'all to be two and out like everybody else. I something. guess, but you know, I, this is my first time running for this position. Uh, you know, this I, I, even if there were term limits, I wouldn't be term limited out. So I'm not. I'm not sure. I guess they they're nervous about. I guess it would have applied to me. Maybe so. Yeah, because I was on my third term. Okay, well, as the president of the police association, I had won two terms, and I had been there for about. I had been. I served it for ten years. Yeah. So I guess they were possibly referring to somebody like me, I guess. Um, I guess. They didn't want me to have a third term. I don't know. I, you're not there, so I, I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think you're going to have a, th a fourth uh, term. or It's not term. a problem, sir. <laughs> it's not a problem. So, uh, uh, Mike's gone, okay? <laughs> so, so, yeah, those are some of the things. But I'm like you when I, when I see the flyers that yeah. say time for change. I'm like, change from what? Yeah. You know, you're... You're, you're making the most money you've ever made. Come you, on. You've got the best benefits you've ever had. Come on. You've got the best legal protection you've uh -oh. ever had. Uh, you know, it's uh, the best representation you have. You, you know, I, I don't change. If, if you want to see that go away, you know. Well, and, and that's another thing I heard. And, I, I, you know, as a former president of the Police Association, I, I watch what's going on. And I'm just curious because I've even heard we need to get rid of Godwin Morris, Lorenzi, and Bloomfield. You know, we need mm -hmm. another law, law firm. And in my mind, I say, wait a minute, Godwin Morris, Lorenz, and Bloomfield is one of the top law agencies that practice civil litigation in the city of Memphis. Not only civil litigation, specifically labor civil, labor, yeah. civil litigation. And so, so what, who what are you going to get is my question. You know, you, they want you, somebody out of D.C.? I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> or uh, something? You know, I, uh, I've had that conversation with a few people. It's like, if we got rid of our attorneys at Godwin, Morris, Lorenzi, and Bloomfield, and you know, and opted to find another firm in Memphis, uh, you know, the fire union folks would have a conflict of interest representing both unions. That wouldn't be an option. And beyond that, I I don't know who the law firm would be that would have the, the capabilities and the experience that that GMLB has. Mm -hmm. Especially now, they've been our attorneys what twenty years, maybe mm -hmm. longer. Yeah. You know, and so. To know the the history, the the workings of the department, the the intricacies of our MOU, you know each each little word, you know, because they, you know, as well, Debbie Godwin is right. is one of our lead negotiators in the contract negotiation. So she walks us through the legal ins and outs of how that language mm -hmm. needs to be read. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, you know, who who are you gonna get that's that's gonna do better? I, I, I good luck. I don't know. Right, right, right. And I, and I'm asking him some of these questions because internal to the Memphis Police Department, Memphis Police Association, like I said, it's, it's getting heated. And a lot of individuals are putting these questions out there. So I wanted him to answer those questions as the next incoming president of the Memphis Police Association. So, uh, no, we're going to claim it. So, <laughs> <All right. clears throat> so you have to have individuals that actually have the knowledge uh, and the ability to be able to work through these issues and to know the historical and to know the foundation. I don't think you can find anybody that has been there longer. Uh, you know, I had been down there a long time. Ethica Littlejohn had been down there a long time. So we kind of knew a lot of the intricacies. And then we had worked on several, several negotiation teams prior to that. And then uh, myself, I was the union rep for Airway Station for several years as well prior to me going down there. But that's why I tell young people you need to get involved early in your career so that you can get the foundation. And everybody that called me, because I got a lot of phone calls about people that wanted to run for different offices, and I didn't try to dissuade anybody from running. But I told them, you need to be running for the right position. Everybody is not for the president. Everybody's right. not for the vice president. 
you know, somebody, sometimes people need to come in as chief stewards. They need to come in as uh, precinct just reps. precinct reps right. so that they can get a basic foundation of how the police association works, the nuances and the intricacies of the police association, the MOU, the working with the uh, command staff, and that's a whole nother subject for me right now, but the workings with the command yeah. staff, you know, and just different things like that. I'm surprised, Matt, uh, you know, and I'm gonna ask you this, you know, you can respond if you want to, you don't have to. <laughs> All right. Man, if I was down there, I would've, no, I ain't going to say that. I'm going to leave that one alone. All right. Ooh, I want to go down that road, though. <laughs> I was just going to say, if I'd have been down there, I'd have been and put up some billboards or something in regards to some of the things that the command, don't answer, the command staff has been doing. But, you know, I, I get it. You know, everybody's trying to figure out what's going on in the lay of the land and sure. different things like that. Big transition going on. Yes, yes, big transition. And we're going to uh, see if some transitions happen with the new mayor coming into yeah. office as well. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows where he stands with the director on the police department. So let me ask yeah. you this. So are you uh, willing to work with the director or the, excuse me, I'm old school <laughs> director, the chief? of the Memphis Police Department. Absolutely. Um, as you said in your monologue, the, the MPA, part of our mission statement yeah. is to be is to support the police department. Yeah. Uh, when Chief Davis came in and we met her for the first time, uh, we explained to her, you know, what the MOU is, what the MPA does. Okay. And, it, and we told her to look at us as a tool. You know, okay. you, you use us as a tool in your tool belt. If you have questions on how to, for promotions or new rank or, uh, you know, how to how to create a new unit, mm -hmm. any of that type of thing, and operationally that she wanted to do, just consult us. We'll be glad to work with you to reach whatever goal you want to meet, and we'll do it within the confines of the MOU. Come on, man, so, you act like you've been down there a while. <laughs> because, historically, we have worked with other directors Absolutely. to assist them in doing what they wanted to do within the constraints of the MOU. Yeah. That MOU is there for a reason, it's because Individual police officers in 1978 went on strike. They laid it down at that time so that they could have the ability to advocate for themselves. Absolutely. That's, that's all it is. People right. just want to be fe treated fairly. People just want to, you know, to have a voice and a seat at the table. And for anybody that, do that wants to take that away from individuals that are out there putting their lives on the line, I have a serious issue with Absolutely. that. Absolutely especially with all of the crime that's going oh. on in this city. We need yeah. good police officers. We need police officers that are uh, community oriented. We need police yeah. officers that, uh, and especially at the MPA, that care about the welfare of these young officers that are coming onto the department. Um, so let me ask you this. <coughs> what is your, pro what are your priorities if no, when you're elected as the president of the police association. So right now, I've got a couple of goals in mind that I want to see happen over the next four years. Um, the first is we've gotten the pension restored. Okay. Uh, so uh, officers that, that lost their pension and went to the hybrid retirement program, they now have had the opportunity or will have the opportunity to get back into the 1978 legacy pension plan that they were in. Um, now, <coughs> excuse me. Of course, and as you know, as you well know, in 2012, the pension was, was rewritten where uh, those hired after July 1 of 12 have a lower pension rate mm -hmm. than what two you point, and I have. 2.25 as opposed to 2.25. Two 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 yeah, Correct. 2 .5. So, what I wanted, my first step is I, I want to be able to get all of us up to that 2.5 per okay. year, okay. Uh, you know, and, and hit that 62.5 percentage uh, at 25 years. Uh, that's goal number one. Goal number two is then, you know, find the money, whether it's uh, whether it's referendum money coming in or whether it's officers paying a, a larger percentage into the pension mm -hmm, fund, mm -hmm. but I want to raise that 62 and a half to a more livable percentage of mm. 70, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's goal number two. Goal number three is I, I want to streamline the grievance process. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we have a four-step process, and right now step one is pretty much impotent. You know, we, nothing really gets solved at that level ever. It's a very low level, you know, supervisor level that usually every supervisor says, i got to have someone above me make a decision mm -hmm. on this. I think it can probably go away altogether. But okay. I definitely want to address that, look at it, and see how we can make these appeal processes and these arbitrations and these grievances move at a faster rate. Okay. Uh, those, are, those are three of my big ones, um, you know, and then I want to – 
keep us to keep us the, as the highest paid law enforcement agency in the region. Uh, luckily, you know, we had a good night at city council at city council at, on election night. Mm -hmm. um, all the people we endorsed and supported have pledged to help keep us in that number one position. Okay. Uh, I look forward to looking to working with Mayor Elect Young and uh, helping ha helping him make that happen. Okay. Um, so you know those those are the the four big ones I've got on the horizon. And then of course you know just to continue to put out the day to day fires that the hundreds of day to day fires that we put out at the <coughs> EPA. Well, I know Mayor Elect Young has said that he really knows nothing about crime fighting, and he don't. Uh, but he's going to be looking for individuals that have the ability, the knowledge, the wherewithal, the experience to be able to advise him Absolutely. on how to put together a plan to attack the crime in this city, which is the number one concern for all of the citizens in this city, especially a lot of us law-abiding, hard-working, tax-paying, uh, seasoned people <laughs> that uh, want to live our lives out in peace. Sure. Want to enjoy the fruits of our labor. Don't want everybody stealing and robbing and killing and you can't go to dinner and somebody breaking in your car and <laughs> you can't park your car and all of this kind of stuff. It runs me crazy. Sure. So I want you to look into that camera right there, Matthew, right. and tell the individuals in the Memphis Police Association why they should elect you as the next mayor. Well, um, I think we've said it all here already tonight. Uh, there's a proven track record with my experience and my history of, of improving pay, working conditions, benefits, legal protection. Um, I've got the experience. I spent my first 18 years on the job in the field, whether okay. it was in patrol or as an investigator. Um, you know, so uh, we've established a relationship at City Hall. Uh, we've established relationships with the police command staff that are beneficial and open lines of communication. And if all that want, you want all that to continue, I'm the guy to elect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Well, and I don't know what it's worth, but I want to say right here, right now, Matthew Cunningham is my choice uh -huh. for the next president of the Memphis Police Association. Um, I have other friends, friends, colleagues that are running for the presidency of the Memphis Police Association. And I said that this is a very critical time and it's a very critical position. How do I know? I served in that position. Uh, I just want to make sure to my other friends that I support you in what you do and I support you running for whatever you want to run for. I've never tried to stop anybody from running for anything. However, you definitely have to run commensurate with your experience level, with your knowledge, and with what you have already contributed to that particular organization. So nothing against any of you guys, but Matt Cunningham is my choice, Mike Williams, uh, for president of the Memphis Police Association. So I want to thank you thank so much for coming you, on to the show. Thank you for having me. All I really right? appreciate it. And we wish you luck, man. You thank know you. how it all unfolds, we <laughs> don't know. Uh, but I am already claiming that you're going to be the president, and I know a lot of other people are going to see it the same way. Uh -huh. So guess what? We're going to take a real quick commercial break because we have John Covington in the studio, and he is vying for vice president of the Miss Police Association. And, and the other way around, I don't recommend. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, but John is going to be coming up, and we're going to talk to him and see what he has done, he's contributed, and how he p plans to take the police association to the next level. So don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Can you actually imagine hosting your next event at the all new SVP Banquet and Event Center? Yes, spacious, beautiful venue with plenty of parking located in the heart of East Memphis. Let us host your next intimate birthday gathering, family repast, bachelorette party, wedding and reception, baby shower, corporate meeting, social club event. Call us today. Don't wait. 901-244-6874. The all new SVP Banquet and Event Center. You were talking about a good time, 
Center to Stage Gospel Music live from Memphis, Tennessee, featuring gospel artists from around the world. Toe tapping, hand clapping, down and home gospel music. Watch on Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, and your local Comcast. Download the SVP TV app now on your smart television and mobile device. Center Stage Gospel season premieres Sunday, 8 p.m. Central. Ladies, do you feel feminine doing your feminine flow? You know, your monthly cycle, your period, are you still suffering in silence? The suffering is over. It's time to choose Rain. Rain is an all natural, premium sanitary napkin with eight layers of cotton, high grade polymers, graphene to help cut bacteria by 99.9%. .9%. Ladies, let's protect the most precious jewel in the world you. Rain Premium Sanitary Napkins do not make any medically bad claims or personal recommendations of any kind. For more information, contact Marilyn McGee. Hey folks, it's Issa Haddad here. I got some good news and a special invitation for you to come see me here at Sunrise Carterville. Come on down, check out my inventory with new, pre-owned, and certified vehicles to choose from. I can get you financed when no one else can. Come on by, bring your family. I treat you like family. Come see me, Issa, here at the number one dealership in the Mid-South. 4605 Houston Levy Road, Sunrise, Carrierville. Come on down, check out my inventory with hundreds of vehicles to choose from. Pre-owned, new, and certified. Good news from Sunrise Chevrolet. Get in your new vehicle today. Come on in, ask for Issa. Bankrupt, slow pay, bad credit, it's okay. Let Issa put you in your brand new truck or car today. When you shop at Sunrise Chevrolet, Carrierville. And don't forget, ask for me, Issa. And welcome back to Memphis 360, the television show. We say we like to go from the boardroom to the streets. How can you fix it? How can you fix this city if you are not in touch with the citizens? What the citizens want, the needs of the citizens, how the citizens are being affected on a daily basis by the crime, how the citizens are being affected on a daily basis having to live in fear, how the citizens are being affected by losing loved ones in this city. When someone is killed in this city, it affects the whole family. Uh, nobody should have to live like that. Nobody should have to feel that pain. Nobody wants to bury a child, okay? So we gotta do something in this city to seriously address what's happening here in the city. You just elected a new mayor, Mr. Paul Young, and I am hoping that that is one of his primary focuses when he comes into office January the 1st, 2024. But guess what? I have another individual in the studio who is running for vice president of the Memphis Police Association. I'm excited. I'm excited. Can you tell? <laughs> I am excited. I am excited. Why am I excited? I used to be the president of the Police Association. I was also the vice president of the Memphis Police Association for a very long time. And I have John Covington. What's up, John? Good to see you, sir. How are you? I am doing great. You okay. are never the chief steward. No. Because it did not exist. It didn't exist. <laughs> That's the only reason I never held that position. Right. It didn't That's exist. Right. We created it. We oh, did. Matthew forgot to tell y'all that we created the chief steward position. Uh, it was 2019. Okay, mm -hmm. look at that, within the five year time frame that he was talking about. Okay, so let's get into it, John. We got about 15, 20 minutes. All right. What, uh, uh, tell, them, tell the folks a little bit about you, tell them a little bit about what you've accomplished, and tell them why you want to be the vice president of the Memphis Police Association. But because John is currently the chief steward, he is the first, he made history, y'all. He is the first chief steward of the Memphis Police Association. So tell them a little bit about yourself, John. Well, as Mike said, I'm John Covington. Uh, I came on the job uh, 10 years ago. This was a second career for me. I was a teacher and social worker before. And I got to tell you, those were great training grounds for being out on the streets. Mm. All those skills came into play. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got involved uh, with the union uh, through a negotiation team. I believe my first one was in 2017. I fell in love with it because it was an opportunity to affect impact and affect real change to benefit officers and to help things like recruitment and retention 
which ultimately are going to help get this crime down and make citizens safer. Okay. We were able to do big things. Right. And uh, so, you know, when I got down there, I, I remember Matt and I said, Matt is great about having conversations about what can we do, mm -hmm. sets the table. Mm -hmm. And we were still living in the aftermath of uh, those cuts where Ooh. we lost 500 officers, which oh. I know you, you led the, the association through that really tough time. And uh, we started digging and looking and we found the sales tax referendum. Mm -hmm. Matt and I went to the mayor. I just pointed to him, he's still here. We went to the mayor and said, Mr. Mayor, please restore these benefits and, and pensions so we can get our numbers back and get this crime under control. Okay. And he said, find me $30 million and I'll mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. And then he walked out. Mm -hmm. I don't think that he thought we were going to take him seriously. Mm. We sat down, we looked through the books, we looked through everything, we found this sales tax referendum. Right. We found that if the citizens voted, they could tax themselves by a half penny. Mm -hmm. So we went to the city council and said, we found the answer. Ken, would you please put this on the ballot so the citizens can decide? And they said, no way. Mm. Okay. Well, we, we only, we picked ourselves back up. We did a little bit more research and we found if you got enough signatures, you could put it before Put it the on the ballot Senate. yourselves. We needed 40,000 signatures. I won't say his name, Berlin boy. Said we would only get 40 signatures. We got 140,000. I remember that vividly. We did. Yes. I remember that vividly. And but I tell you, it was hard work. We were out there uh, fighting every day, with getting signatures and, you know, going to everything that had a fest, burger fest, chicken wing <laughs> fest, every fest. And, and the citizens were fantastic. They were coming up. They couldn't wait to sign All our right, right. petition. Well, we, we managed to get that done working with fire, and we got it before the citizens. Wait a minute, say that again. What we worked with the fire association. There you go. Okay. And we got it on the ballot before the citizens, and believe it or not, for the first time in the history of Tennessee, and I'm almost sure nationally, a group of citizens voted to tax themselves mm. to restore benefits and pensions to the proud men and women who risked everything mm -hmm. every day and night for them. Mm -hmm. We can never thank them enough for that. Uh, and from that, we were able to, and then we had to work with the city, you know, and we sat down and had meetings. And Matt talked about experience. You build relationships yeah, doing these yeah, things to get yeah, things done. Yeah. And we were able to restore those things, and we were also able to uh, do that 14% raise. That was made possible as mm -hmm. a result. Mm -hmm. And I also want to point out, and sometimes people forget this, part of that referendum was to put money towards uh, pre-K mm -hmm. and street paving. Mm -hmm. For the first time in the history of the city of Memphis, mm -hmm. Any child in Memphis who wants to go to pre-K can. There's a lot of organizations out there who talk about the great things they've done, and many of them have, but they forget that the citizens and the Memphis Police Association did a really great things right. for the young people of the city. And right. also, thanks to the referendum, <coughs> 10 new paving trucks the city was able to buy. Mm -hmm. You may not have seen, <laughs> seen the benefits of it yet, but they were able to get the equipment to really start to move on this paving process. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was a huge accomplishment. We also managed to, uh, one of the issues brought to us by the members okay. was the issue of residency. Mm -hmm. It was kind of messed up. We had like three different residency policies. One group uh, were hired, they had to live in the city of Memphis. The other could live in, in Shelby County. And another group could live outside Shelby County. Our members came to us and said, we want the flexibility to live outside the county within two hours. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of that is, it's not that the, you don't love the city of Memphis, you don't care about the city of Memphis, but sometimes you need to get away. Uh, my wife was on the job. She's uh, since moved on to another job. We ran into three people she had arrested at the Midtown Kroger. Mm -hmm. And after the third one, I said, I'm done. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we moved, and we moved out, and, and many have decided to, to do the same. We were able to work, uh, the city council, uh, the mayor pushed it, the city council vetoed it. We worked with the state to get that done. Mm -hmm. And so it's also a part of the recruitment and retention piece mm -hmm, that we're mm -hmm, working on. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the major things we've worked on. We've also become, believe it or not, Mike, politicians and city leaders obviously say, you police officers, you're the greatest thing ever we love. If we could pay you a million dollars, we would. Mm -hmm. But then when a police officer has a problem with their paycheck, or a retiree, something's not wrong with their wow. paycheck, or they have a question they have about uh, their uh, health care, anything like that, they get the runaround. Mm -hmm. We have turned into the HR for the officers, mm -hmm. and they call, we answer those questions now because we don't want officers to have to wait. If we don't have the answer, we find the answer. Okay. And so our goal was to keep our officers the highest paid, the healthiest, 
and, uh, and to deal with their issues because they don't have time to be sitting on the phone dealing with all this stuff. We build a lot of relationships. We can jump to the top if mm -hmm. we have to mm -hmm. to get these mm -hmm. problems solved. Call the director of whatever organization. And we HR. build relationships and we do yeah. that and sometimes we don't <coughs> overuse it, but when it is a situation for a family or, or an officer, we reach out and say, hey, can you please help us get this resolved? Oh, wow, wow. And, and, they, and they do that. And so, I, and then we're also there if an officer is having problems in their life, having mm -hmm. issues they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten calls, I've gotten calls, Matt's gotten calls, Eska, Jeremy, and then we direct them to resources that they might need mm -hmm. and, and things of that nature. So we're just, we try to be there at all times, solving problems, being advocates and fighting for these officers uh, because they are certainly fighting for the city and they need somebody fighting for them. Well, and I don't think people know, like I said, the internal workings of the police department, the police association. I can remember when there was not a uh, outlet for officers who were experiencing uh, trauma. You know, when you're out here in the city and you're dealing with all of these individuals and you're dealing, I can remember one day I was working airways. I responded to a shots fired call. A young man was shot in the eye and in the neck. Uh, right there at South Parkway and I can't remember the name of the street right before uh, 3rd Street. But anyway, dealt with him, dealt with him, dealt with him. Please don't let me die. Please don't let me die. He died right there uh, while I was with him. Cleaned all that up. Next thing you know, another call. Shots fired. Mm. The Belts Apartments, right up the street, uh, South Park, what, well, not South Parkway. Um, uh, no, it's, it was third and belts, actually. It was the, and they changed it to the Washington apartment. It was the belts apartments at the time. And a 10-year-old had gotten shot, and he died as well. Now, some kind of way I've been able to um, be able to work through all of this. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not on drugs. It's only by the grace of God as far as I'm concerned. But I've been able to deal with it. But I got issues. I eventually had to go see a counselor. But I say all of that to say, you guys were also able to put a mechanism in place to where as individuals could actually get like 10 free visits or something like that. That's correct. Okay. And, and something that if by the grace of God and the good graces of the membership I'm elected, I want to work on is that what FIRE has now, it's called a PTSD, PTSD. presumption. Yeah. PTSD presumption bill. Okay. Where if, if you truly suffer from PTSD, Basically, it cuts out a lot of the red tape okay. because it clearly came from the job. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's something that FIRE has been successful with. And we've already started laying the groundwork okay. with some people in the state to okay. get that in place. Okay. And uh, so it, it, it's an extremely important aspect of the job. And another thing that we put in place, it's a pilot program, is that if you go and uh, check with your doctor, do one checkup, mm -hmm. and then talk to a medical uh, wellness professional, uh, basically a psychologist or mm -hmm. a psychiatrist, and mm -hmm. you can do that with one of your free visits mm -hmm. on the telephone, mm -hmm. you can get a bonus day off. Because mm. what we're trying to encourage people is take away the stigma mm -hmm. of talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of officers, you know how they are. Don't want to reach out to nobody they because they say, fear hey, is going to. I'm going to do this silly thing and talk to this mental wellness professional because I'm going to get my day. But then when they get talking to him, it's like, hey, now that I'm talking to you, mm. there is a scene that kind of mm. plays in my mind. Yeah. And so what we're trying to make it easier and more accessible and just, and just normalize that it's okay right. to ask for right. help. And, right. and we've had some success in that. And that's something I'm really, really committed to. Outstanding. Uh, there's another thing that y'all haven't talked about that y'all were successful in doing, you and Matt. A sick bank. Sick bank. That has been amazing. That was Come that, on. That was Matt's brainchild. And uh, it was one of mine. It was not Matt's brainchild. It was mine. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it, was <laughs> <laughs> it was mine. Dad gummit. It no, takes a village. Kidding. And, and, and the group kidding. we've got down there has worked so well yeah. on these major projects. And that has been absolutely incredible. You get in the sick bank, you make a donation into it of uh, about 16 hours, mm -hmm. and it becomes this big bank, and it goes to any officer who, well, we had an officer off duty riding home on his motorcycle, hit by a truck, and by the grace of God, mm -hmm. he survived. Right. He, he would have lost his house, but we were able to get him about a year and a half out of that sick bank so he could be paid. Okay. And, that, and that's, that was a huge thing. And I want to tell you something else real quick. 
I'm running for vice president. It's a big shoes to fill. And one of the things the vice president does is in, far, in charge of the charitable foundation. Oh, wow. I forgot about the MPACF. Jesus. Y'all did a lot of good things down there. But well, go ahead. Well, as a, <laughs> in my job right now, I'm kind of the lobbyist deal. Because okay. if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Yeah. you got to learn Ooh, to be part of it. I, like I learned that, that from you. Not at the mentor. table, you're on the menu. And But also, we have to do that with the community. We have to take these opportunities to build trust mm -hmm. and, and, and with the community and using the charitable foundation it's not just for officers and their families in need but obviously that's a big part of what we do but it's also supporting things in the community that are helping mm. that are growing these ties and bonds because we are all in this together to mm. make a safer world. outstanding place. and I know for a fact because uh, when I was down there the Memphis Police Association charitable foundation has given back almost two million dollars back into the community and that money comes out of officers checks every month they contribute to the Police Association Charitable Foundation on a voluntary basis. Nobody is forced to do it. And they ensure you know, that, you know, individual kids, we, we did one year, the victim, uh, children, victims of homicide, if their parents were killed in a homicide, we went and we took a train uh, or a trail of cars all the way through the city, police cars, and delivered the toys to these children's houses. Uh, we've done parties at the Pink Palace Museum okay. for children who were victims uh, or their parents were victims of homicides. You know, you guys have done so much, so good, so, so many good things in this community, man. And I want you and Matt to vow that if, in fact, no, excuse me, <laughs> when you're elected, because uh, I think John's going to win the vice presidency as well, because I definitely support him. Uh, you, and I have no, and the thing is, I have no problem with standing here saying I support these guys because I know these guys have worked really, really, really hard um, to do things to uh, actually secure the future of the MPA. So look right in that camera right there, John, and tell these people in the Memphis Police Association, because I'm going to post it over there in the retirees page, why they should vote for you. I would like to ask you to vote. This has been the great privilege of my life for the last four years to be able to oh. serve our membership. Wow. It has mean, been everything <coughs> to me, and we have had great success working with Matt, working with Jeremy, working with Eska. I want to continue that work to support the families, support the officers, make things better. When you leave this job, I want you to have a good pension. Okay. I want you to have a good, healthy life. Okay. And I'm dedicated to that, and I want to continue this good work. And I, and I want you guys to know, when I was the president of the Memphis Police Association, um, I turned over the initiative for the halves and sales tax to John. And John worked with uh, another company. Uh, you know, we had a representative, FIRE had a representative, the, the, Memphis, uh, the International Association of Firefighters for the city of Memphis. They had a representative because we went half and half. So it wasn't just the police association, it was also the fire association that went in to secure the benefits for the retirees and all of that. I think that fund is generating anywhere from 50 something to 70 some million dollars a year, more money than they know what to do with. <laughs> okay, so um, I turned that over to John and John was able, like he said, we only needed 40,000 signatures. We went out and got 144,000 signatures uh, when Mr. Berlin board said we wouldn't get 40 and these guys were able to prove them wrong and they've done so much good for the association already all right guess what Miss Carla has come into the studio so that's a <laughs> sign it's time for me to go but that's okay hey and to you guys that are out there running if any of you other guys from the Memphis Police Association want to come onto the show and you want to give your platform you're more than welcome uh, I'm opening the platform up to anybody that wants to come, okay? I'm not going to turn you down. If you want to come, we can talk. We can talk about the issues. We can talk about what's really going on. We can talk about what you've done. But don't think it's gonna, you're going to come up here and it's going to be a free ride. We're, and I'm not going to be biased. I am going to ask the same questions that I've asked these guys. And you can answer. And at the end of the day, we're going to sail off into the sunset and have a wonderful life, all right? <coughs> So I want to thank you guys for tuning in to Memphis 360 once again. It has been a plum-pleasing pleasure. And until next week, same time, same